Hey guys, welcome to channel Dev Kage. In this Flutter Basics video, I am going to show you how to listen to notifications from widgets and react to those notifications using notification listener widget. And as an example, I am going to implement the auto hide floating action button feature using a list view. You probably might have seen this feature in Telegram's chat screen. Basically, when you start scrolling down in a chat history, a floating action button pops up on clicking which we are automatically taken to the latest message in the chat and we are going to implement the same thing in this video so let's get going first i'll replace the current body of the scaffold with the list view builder as we just need a dummy list to scroll through i'll set its item count to 200 now from the item builder i'll return a list style widget with its title property as a text widget and here i'll just display the item number Ok, so now we have this nice list in the app. Next, let's quickly add a floating action button using the floating action button property of scaffold. I'll set the child for this floating action button as a down arrow icon. Now on pressing the floating action button, we need to scroll the list all the way to the end. And to control scroll position of any scrollable widget, Flutter provides a controller property. This needs an object of scroll controller class. So let's add a new state variable of type scroll controller in this state class. To initialize this scroll controller, I'll override the init state method. And in here, I'll just initialize it with the default scroll controller. Also, this controller needs to be disposed properly when current state object gets destroyed. For this, I'll override the dispose method. And before calling super.dispose, I'll call dispose on the scroll controller. And now we can set this scroll controller as the controller for this list view. Now in the on press of floating action button, we can call jump to method on scroll controller to change the scroll position of this list view. But you can see that jump to needs a double value, which means we need to provide the exact distance in pixels by which the list should scroll. Now calculating this might turn out to be a little tedious task, but luckily we don't have to do that because we can get this value from scroll controller dot position dot max scroll extent. Now be careful while calling position on scroll controller because it throws an exception if same controller is used for multiple scrollable widgets. But in this case it is fine because we are sure that it is attached to only a single list view. Now let's do a hot restart so that the new code that we wrote inside init state gets executed. Now if I click on the floating action button, you can see that the list goes to the end and we are seeing item number 199. Ok, so now let's see how to hide the floating action button when we are going up and show it only when we are going down. So for that, I'll first wrap this list view with a notification listener. If you check the documentation of notification listener, you can see that it takes a type parameter of notification. So basically, here we can specify the type of notification that we want to listen to. So I'll specify user scroll notification. This type of notification gets triggered when the scroll direction of list view changes. If you check the documentation for user scroll notification, you can see that it extends from scroll notification. And just like user scroll notification, there are few more derived classes of scroll notification which get triggered on different events. But for now, we are okay with user scroll notification. So let's go back to our code. After setting the type of notification that we want to listen to, we can use the on notification callback to react to these notifications. This callback function takes notification object as input and returns a boolean. So here, I'll create a function that takes a notification object and returns true. Returning true tells the Flutter framework that we have handled the notification and do not want to propagate it to other widgets higher up in the widget tree. Now before returning true, we need to check the direction of scroll to decide if floating action button should be displayed or not. For this, I'll check if notification.direction is equal to scroll direction dot forward. If it is forward, we'll do something, else if it is reverse, we'll do something else. Now to decide the state of floating action button, I'll create one more state variable of type bool called showfab and I'll set the initial value for this as false. Now in the on notification callback, if the direction is forward, I'll set showfab to false and if it is reverse, I'll set it to true. 
and now we can use this show fab to decide if floating action button property should be set to floating action button widget or to null. To see the changes in UI after changing value of show fab, we'll need a rebuild. So I'll put this whole code inside a set state call. And that is it. Now if I scroll up, the floating action button disappears. And if I start scrolling down, it appears again. So this is one of the ways in which you can use notification listener to react to notifications emitted by widgets. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.